Welcome back, Connor. Glad to see you're still with me. I trust your bathroom break went well. I hope you had a hell of a piss, Arnold. Pick up a little snack along the way. Good for you. In that case, strap yourself in. Let's pick up where we left off with part two of the money training. Okay, so picking up where we left off, I'm gonna copy that last frame and paste it onto the next page. So it's gonna be two frames describing the same shot, an A and a B frame. In the B frame, she's going to be looking up as the stream of money cascades down. You know, after uploading part one of this Discover card job, it was brought to my attention that I tend to gloss over the whole process of shot selection. Meaning, I don't talk about the thinking that goes into which shot I'm choosing and what shot will come next. Whether it's a close-up, medium shot, low angle, high angle, you get the idea. Well, it turns out there is a reason why I don't really go into that aspect of the job in most of these videos. And that's because on most jobs, this one included, I just get a shot list from the director which tells me exactly what to draw. Kind of like what you're looking at here. The director will write down descriptions for each shot he wants me to draw, and then usually we'll jump on the phone so that he can elaborate or I can ask any questions that pop into mind. As much as I like to talk about the importance of developing strong storytelling skills, the truth is that traditionally, this is the job of the director. I mean, that's pretty much what they do. That's literally in their job description. But I do think that the topic is interesting, and it's important enough that it, I feel like it deserves its own series of videos. Hopefully I can get to that in the not too distant future. Okay, so now we get to the part where the money really starts raining down. And here's where things get interesting. My initial thought was to simply grab an image from the treatment, scale it up, and then trace all of that cash. I stopped after only half a frame, stepped back and did the math. At this rate, I'll be drawing little falling dollar bills until the next ice age. So instead, I decided to follow the sage advice of Scrooge McDuck. Work smarter, not harder. Instead, I drew one dollar bill and then opened 3D Studio Max. First, I created a particle system and then a camera. I positioned the camera where I needed it to be, then created a 2D plane, the approximate dimensions of a dollar bill, and gave it a little bend in the middle, saying it wouldn't look too stiff, you know? Inside the particle flow control panel, I set the shape to shape instance, which essentially allows you to use any geometry as your particle, and then selected V-Ray as my renderer. I chose V-Ray specifically so I could add the V-Ray tune feature. I personally have been using 3D Studio Max since version 2.5 was released, which was about, I don't know, 20 years ago. But honestly, you'd be able to do this in any modern 3D program. Okay, so now anytime there's a shot that requires cash to rain down, I at least have the option of simply snapping off a new render. A few of these bills are blocking your face, so let's go ahead and delete them. Pepper in a few more in the background. And then I'll just erase the background image behind all of these bills. And finally, I think I'll strengthen some of these lines with my fine marker brush. Moving on, the remaining three frames on this page are all going to describe one shot. So it's an A, B, and a C frame. What's happening here is that the woman is leaving the subway car and is then going to cross over to frame left and exit, never to be seen again. I heard she went out to party with all that newfound money, developed a pretty serious drug habit, and then died broken and alone in some seedy hotel room. Grass isn't always greener, folks. But the good news is that in frame C, a new character, who also has money raining down on him, enters from frame left and becomes the new hero of the spot. Hopefully, he'll be a little bit more responsible with his free cash. The next two frames are leading this guy in a front three-quarter as he walks the length of the subway platform. Turns out, life is pretty good when you've got an endless stream of cash pouring down on you. And, you know, no crippling drug habit. In the first frame, I can get away with just tracing the location photo in the background. But for the B frame, the camera is going to swing around to end up in a perfect frontal shot. I don't have a photo of that exact angle, so I'm going to just grab my perspective tool here and freehand it, baby. In the next frame, our hero is going to pass a street performer who's got an open guitar case at his feet. He'll pluck one of those free bills out of his stream and drop it down into the guitar case because that's just the kind of guy that he is. Mm -hmm. 
The next shot will be a wide shot of the platform as two different commuters enter from either side of the frame, both with streams of money. First, I'm going to get the background drawn up and out of the way. Then I'm going to open up my stock men walking file, which is something you've seen me do now in a number of these videos. This is just a sheet with a bunch of guys walking, all loosely sketched out. It's super handy when you're in a time crunch to be able to just use these previously drawn sketches as a starting point and build up on top of that. At this point, we now have a complete set of sketches. That was the hard part. Once those sketches were approved by the director, it was smooth sailing. The final leg of this journey involves simply tightening up the existing sketches. In an effort to keep these videos down to a manageable length, I do not suppose you could have spit things up. I'm gonna blast past this part. Finally, we end up with a nice set of director-approved boards. For some reason, I was not able to find the full 30-second spot anywhere on the internet. I did, however, manage to find a 15-second cutdown. Let's go ahead and take a look and see how our boards stack up. Discover automatically matches all the cash back you earn at the end of your first year. Dollar for dollar. Millions of people a year get their cash back matched. What are you waiting for? Unlimited cash back match, only from Discover. Alrighty folks, I think that's just about going to wrap things up for today. I certainly hope you were able to get something out of today's video. It seems to me the only thing you have learned is that Caesar is a salad dressing dude. And as always, if you found this video insightful or entertaining, and would like to see more of them in the future, go ahead and hit the subscribe button below. Until next time, this is Vinny Delay with Angry Grow Rich.